want to get done this week? And kind of what was your message um, as you gave your guys today's off? Yeah, um, the, the message today was kind of like it doesn't get easier. You know, I think some of us sometimes, you know, in life we start to look for the light at the end of the tunnel. And, uh, you know, this is just the beginning. You know, spring practice will never be this easy again. You know, um, we'll, it'll, when I say easy in a good way, like we'll, we'll get better and better and better. Um, you know, just worry about the next play and uh, try, to, try to get that mindset instead of, hey, let me get through this and get to, you know, a couple days off here that I gave the guys this weekend. So um, they, they've had five days. I told them to come back Tuesday ready to go. You know, um, I really believe one of the greatest gifts we can give these guys as they go on to be, pro, you know, pro athletes or – pros or whatever they choose to be is the um, the uh, self-awareness to own your work ethic right so we have a lot of guys who make mistakes on the practice field and you know I told them hey you have a playbook <laughs> you know you have video you go study so um, you get to the National Football League you know and you, you get cut on Monday and you get signed by somewhere on Wednesday you know Christian McCaffrey you know he got traded on Thursday I think he played that weekend you know or pretty soon thereafter so can you learn things really quickly so just a challenge to those guys to Take care of their bodies uh, over the next week, over the next couple of days. Learn the playbook better, and then we we believe that um, any place a Nebraska football player shows up, it should be a better place. So to do things right and do things really well the next couple of days, and show back up on Tuesday. When it comes to the playbook, I mean, how much do you want their heads in the playbook over these next five days? So the retention is there Tuesday when you come back. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's it's individual to each guy, right? It takes what it takes, and so um, you know. There's some, you know, one of the most dangerous things is when guys kind of know what to do, so they can kind of do it. Like you can't figure out how to do your job until you know what, what what your job is. And so we have a lot of guys still at that level one, like trying to learn what it is. And we can make excuses for them, but we're just trying to change the expectation level of our guys, right? Like we're not here to try hard. We're not here to lose and thank the fans. We're here to win. And so winning it happens now. It doesn't happen in the fall. So um, the guys who really know their jobs really well, uh, guys who. We got some walk-on players who 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 um, should probably be on scholarship. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, over, so it's like um, you know you are what you produce. And so I just want the guys to understand like, hey, I own the way I practice. I own. Someone has a phone call here. Um, I own. I own the way that I practice. I own the way that I prepare. I own the result, right? And so the whole like, coach didn't give me a chance, or you know, coach, we get trying to get rid of all that. I think when you give that gift to young people that we're in control of our futures. Um, they, 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 they can take off. Did you have a chance to uh, um, make any assessments based off of what you saw on the film from your scrimmage Saturday, um, specifically about how your quarterback played? Yeah, I thought the quarterback, was, that was the best the quarterbacks have played. Well, all right, guys, I see that. I see, I see who's loyal to me. <laughs> nah. uh, I thought the quarterbacks played, the, that's the best they played. It's the absolute best they played. And I think they needed that. They needed those live reps, right? Just like, you know, when they can get hit to speed up their pro – we started practice off today, man. We came right out of stretch, and we went quarterbacks live down inside the five-yard line. And um, what you find out is they don't, when you do that, they don't really get hit that often. But it just speeds up their process. Um, and uh, so a lot, of, a lot of things for us right now are, like, just a, a little bit off timing-wise. And what I love about our group is they're not making excuses. You know, like, you're used to throwing this route with this guy, and all of a sudden this guy's in. You have to figure it out. So – um, I, I thought they played well in the scrimmage. Um, you know, today was a much better day for probably the defense than the offense. The defense was significantly better today. So I'd like to just kind of hopefully we keep volleying it back and forth as opposed to one side being more dominant than the other. Matt, we have some tight ends up here, Coach Wager. What, what would you say about that group so far through the, the, the spring and what you've seen? Yeah, it's one of our more t uh, talented groups. Um, you know, uh, Fedoni's like, yeah, I, I kind of have always have like a couple guys like, you know, that I'm trying to like really work with. And Fedoni's kind of one of my guys, man. I really like the guy. He's so competitive. He's so driven, um, you know, and uh, sometimes when you're driven, it drives you all over the place. Like you just can't stand when it just doesn't come right away. And I, that's what I love about him, right? Like I'm a little bit wired that way. <laughs> um, you know, the best players I've been around are wired that way. So just, you know. I've tried to limit him even more than we've limited him, and he fights me every time. So I just love his competitive nature. Uh, Eric is just re really, really talented and a big physical presence. You know, Borkatur and Lindemeyer are two guys, you know, that, that have walked on here that, that play like scholarship players. You know, they've, they've, they're, they're, you know they're, they're, they would have started for me at a lot of places I've been. They can start here, I believe. So really like those guys and what they've done. Um, uh, you know, Applegate coming back off the injury. Um, really been pleased with him. And, you know, uh, um, you, know, you know, the rest of the guys just, they, they battle. So really like the group. Um, 
I think it's one of our stronger positions. Um, and then we brought, you know, we brought Bonner over. He's kind of like, kind of like a Weapon X hybrid type of a guy. Like, we had, and he had class. I know you guys want to interview him, but you know, he had class, and so I, he's he had to, he had to leave for that. But um, he's kind of one of those hybrid guys that I think with a, with what Sat's done at some places he's been, some of the things I've done, we can use him in a lot of different ways. When it comes to Fedoni, how tough is it to not really turn him loose so he can really test your defense if you were able to turn him loose? I, I pretty much have, honestly. Like, you know, I mean, he didn't, you know, maybe not all the live stuff all the time, but even today he got a little live work. So I, I kind of have relented on it a little bit. You know, I mean, I, I have to trust him with his body and how he feels. He's cleared. Um, I, so, I, you know, I, I feel like he's come a long way. I think for him, um, you know, it's just, uh, it's just, you know, it's always hard learning new offenses and finding that niche. I think he's starting to really find that niche. Great seam runner for us. Makes, make, has made some big plays in the two minute. Tenacious blocker. Um, so, for me, you know, what I don't want is I don't want, and it's it's kind of how 18 to 22 year old brains work nowadays. Like, well, probably always, right? They're always looking at like today as if it's a finished product, and I can see what they're gonna be, right? So, to me, it's just a, a building uh, building progression to get there. Really happy with where all those guys are at. To be quite honest, I think that could be a real weapon for us that whole that whole room. And then talk about the coaching staff holding each other accountable. Why is that important? Do you see any trickle down to players? Though? Um. I don't know the coaching staff. I mean, I, I mean, I, I think my job is to coach the coaches, right? And I think you know we believe that on the football field, iron sharpens iron. So I think if uh, if I'm if I'm you know if, if things aren't being done the way they're supposed to, if we say we're going to do something, it doesn't happen. You know, whether it's a coach or player, like the way we went, the way everyone, you, you know, how coaches always come out after games and say we just got to execute better. What does that mean? It means everyone's got to do exactly what they're supposed to do. So um, I think the players appreciate that the coaches get held accountable. I think they appreciate when I say I'm wrong and. Ultimately, you know, I'll get held accountable. So, um, again, we are, and we really strive to be, we are a, a, a caring, not coddling environment. I, I say that to the guys all the time. Caring, not coddling. We are, where, we are where top producers go to be with other top producers. We want to be with the best of the best. And so um, if we have a bunch of coaches who are sensitive and coaching staffs who argue with each other, then that's what the players are going to do. So the best thing we can do is just model what it means to be a lion out there. What about uh, Miles Palmer? You talked to him. What have you seen him leadership-wise, and then on the field? Yeah, Miles. Miles, um, you can you can turn a team into a good team when your uh, best players, a, um, they they buy into the things that not only that they everyone buys into the things that they like. Can they buy into the things that they don't like? Can they buy into the things that don't make sense? So Miles is one of those guys who like first got here. Like part of his edge, which I love. <laughs> is to be a little bit chippy and he's gotten to the point now where like he understands like hey let me coach you and so miles one of my favorite guys to be on the field with he's physical he's competitive but he's bought into a lot of the small details whether it's the classroom whether it's the way we communicate with each other and if i can get more and more of the other guys to do what miles has done we'll have a chance to have a good team hey, Brian, you said gilbert's a guy that has to have a waiver can you talk about that process and when you might know he's good to go yeah over the i don't year. i don't know that yeah i don't know the timing honestly those things are always no, I, I don't. I can't. I don't want to say anything about it. I just don't know. You know, I, I, it's completely out of my hands. So, um, you know, I, I'll just say this: when I when I took Eric, I, I told him, I said, "Hey, um, this is uh, this is a long term play for you, and you know, in, in your future. So if it, if it works out where he can play this year, which I believe he should be able to, then great. And if he can't, then we're going to help him get ready for next year or for the NFL. So, um, you know, I, I've seen I've seen a lot in football. You know, and I just think there's a lot of a lot of these guys, um, they just need someone to give them a chance, like a real chance, and do things the right way. And so um, I like him a lot. So we're gonna we're doing that. He's doing excellent in school, great kid. So I hope it works out for him. Now, we asked Coach White last week about the word potential. We heard him use a lot throughout practice. Is that a word you introduced to the team and coaching staff? And if so, what exactly does it mean to you? Yeah, we we, t we talk a lot about intentionality. That's something t Terrence always, Knighton always talks about. Um, yeah, we, the, the way I phrase it is we, we believe in two types of practice. We believe in deliberate practice and deep practice. And, um, you know, I always tell the, I, I always tell the guys, like, if, if, you can't, if you can't hit a driver, do you go to the golf course and work on your putting? You know what I mean? Like, no, right? So you work on the things you need to work on. So we, we want guys to be very intentional, right? Very intentional about what they're working on. Very intentional about being in the moment. Um, we don't want to waste their time. Right, so a lot of times you can just say, "Hey, be here for three hours." Like we, want, we, you know, we practiced a long time. Like, I, you know, we just practiced for two, you know, over two and a half hours, right? Which is not really what people do nowadays, but that's intentional because I want to teach them how to concentrate for a long time. Some days we'll practice for an hour and a half, right? But right now we're trying to teach them how to concentrate for long periods of time. 
So I just think, you know, um, being intentional about everything, I'm, I'm happy to always explain the why to the guys, like, hey, Coach, why are we doing this? 100% I'll tell you why. So um, if that's one of the basic things in our program, just being really intentional about everything that we do so we get the desired result in the long run. Bryce Ben Hart's a guy who's played a lot of college snaps. What do you see about his poss- with his possibilities and just what he means to that, that group as a, a veteran guy? Yeah, I, I said it the other day. I think I said it the other day. Like, I think you know Bryce is an NFL player. There's no doubt to me about that. Um, I think with what we're doing and the way we're playing, I think it's going to turn Bryce loose. Um, you know, I think a lot of those guys, you know, and I'm not throwing it on I think they probably a lot of them kind of been beat down. Like I said, the narrative is the O-line's terrible, the O-line's terrible. And so they hear that a lot. And so I think Bryce, like all, all those guys on the offensive line, just has to play with great confidence, right? Confidence is not, no, no matter what, you know, confidence is not, you know, in my opinion, just my humble little opinion, not telling your kids, hey, you can do anything in life, right? Like, like, I love my mom, but if I just, my mom never told me I could do anything in life, you know? And so, like, we tell our kids sometimes they can do things they can't. And actually backfires a lot, in my opinion. So, uh, to me, confidence comes from elite preparation, right? And doing it day after day. That's why we go ones on ones every day. We don't go ones on twos, ones on threes. We go ones on ones. So that, you know, Jamari, one of our best pass rushers, or Judy, or whoever's working on Bryce every day and working on Piper every day. And so that they all just keep saying, hey, we're getting better because iron sharpens iron. So, a lot of these guys, the, the key for how the season will go, because people always ask me how the season will go. And, you know, we have, we have the coaches we have, we have the players we have. A lot of it will come down to confidence, right? A lot will come down to, like, at what point do they believe they can really win? You, you know, when I say believe, like, we all say we believe, but, like, when you're down 17-7 in the second quarter, you know, the great teams that played here probably laughed and then took it 170 yards, made it 17-14. The other team had a lot of pressure on them. You know, when we start playing with confidence, whether that's next week or in two years, we'll be a good team. Um, so I, I say that about Bryce. I, I look at him. I see, I see an NFL player. I see an all-conference caliber player. The question is, what does he see? And I say that for a lot of guys, not just him. Piper, Nori, all those guys. Man, that, that offensive line is as talented as the one as I've been around in college football uh, in terms of as a head coach. Um, that Are they going to believe it and are they going to put it together? So that, that's why we're trying to practice the way we're practicing right now. Mark, you want coach? Matt, you've got a handful of early goalies who are new to college football in general, not just the system. How do you see how do you like how their development is going? Yeah, I, I've ne- normally you notice that they're early enrollees, but like Cam Lenhart and Prince Will spent a lot of time on our first string. Um, you know, they are they are outstanding players. Boodle's finally been um, finally been cleared to practice full time, and he's he's just got a great feel. You know, when you recruit guys, sometimes you don't know the feel that they have, and you know, you know, I guess when you come from his lineage, you know, <laughs> you can expect it. But like he he's out there. He made a great play. Um, on the goal line today. And, and so, uh, you know, Gunnar Gatula is out there. Like, uh, that's the hardest position. Like, hey, be an O-lineman. Oh, by the way, go play left tackle and be running with the second unit. And I think he's done an excellent job. I mean, excellent job. So uh, I probably forget Maverick Noonan's natural pass rusher, great feeling for it. So I've never really noticed, right, like, hey, these guys are all early enrollees. Um, they just kind of they kind of fit in. Um, is there anybody else I'm missing? I don't think so. They kind of all fit in. And again, that's why I talk about some of the walk on players that we have. I never noticed that, hey, he's a walk on, right? We got a bunch of guys that I know could help us. So, like Herbick, like Herbick's been playing his tail off, right? So, um, you know, we, we, try to, we try to look at everybody and just kind of where they are right now. And I think uh, those, those early enrollees are going to help us. And, 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 and maybe they won't help us this year. I mean, I hope so. Who, who knows? Uh, that's why I always say, like, I wait all the way till training camp to kind of make those decisions because some guys are going to make huge jumps in the summer and some guys won't. Coach, to clarify, are you guys shut down until Tuesday morning, or would you have other? Oh, we have, like, yeah, we have, we have, uh, we have tonight. We have a team event every Thursday night. Every Thursday night, we do something with the guys. Can bring their girlfriends or a family member. We bring our families. Uh, those of us who have families here. Um, tonight, we're doing home run derby at the softball field with a dinner. Um, I can promise you. I, before cell phones, I would have tried to hit a ball, but now, now with cell phones, we can't because it goes. Everything goes viral. And then uh, tomorrow, we have meetings and liftings. You know, and then I expect them all to go to class. And then they're, they're shut down Saturday, Sunday. We have the training room open Saturday, mandatory for some guys, optional for others, depending on where they are status-wise. Sunday they're off like they always are. Then Monday we'll be right back, 6 a.m., lifting and meetings. So I just meant more like on the field. But, yeah, hopefully, hopefully guys have a chance to get away a little bit and, um, or just kind of kick it here. Who knows? Like, like, like watch the Masters like I'll do. So. All good? Anybody else? No injury questions.